Hi Calculus 3 students, uh, this is the third part of uh, the end of section exercise calculus with parametric curves and this part we have a little bit more on our plate we will see soon. So uh, given this curve it's the same as in part one and part two what we want to do is to locate the points where the tangent line is horizontal and the points uh, for which the tangent line is vertical and we also want, want to determine uh, the values of t for which the curve is either concave upward and concave downward. Uh, keep in mind here, we, we mean concave upward and concave downward in x because we have the second derivative of y with respect to x. All of these steps has, have been performed in the video before, in the second part. And now we're about to use them. So let's answer the first question. Where is the tangent line horizontal? So for horizontal tangent line, uh, I want you to remember that you need y prime of t to be equal to zero, but x prime of t not equal to zero. Okay. If both of them are zero, you need another technique to find uh, if the tangent line is horizontal or not there. So, okay over there so what would you do um, okay well you set y prime of t equal to 0 so uh, 0 is equal to 60 minus 3 t squared okay and as usual you factor so you have like 3 t times 2 minus t okay so it happens twice it happens when t is equal to 0 and it happens when uh, t is equal to 2. Okay, uh, so now there's two things to do. One thing is to verify that, uh, so verify that x of 0 and x of 2 are not equal to 0. So verify uh, x of 0 and x of 2. Okay, so let's do them one by one x of 0, what is it? Uh, this is, uh, oh, oops, it's, you verify the x prime. Okay, you want to make sure that x prime of 0 is not 0, and x prime of uh, 2 is not 0. Okay, so let's do this. x prime of 0, what's this? This is 2, we're good. Okay, so it's not 0. x prime of 2, what is it? It's 4 plus 2, 6. We're good. It's not 0. So we know that the tangent line is horizontal when t is equal to 0 or when t is equal to 2. Now what we have to do is to find the coordinates of uh, the points in these, at these uh, values of t. So from there, so this is like step number 1. Okay, step number two is this, to verify like x prime of 0 and x prime of 2. And step number three is to plug these values of t inside of x and y. So x of 0, what is it? So you plug in t is equal to 0, you get 0. And x uh, y of 0, so y of 0, so when you plug t in here, you get 0. So in other words, the tangent line is horizontal at 0, 0. You then do the same when t is equal to 2. So you have like x of 2. So x of 2, you plug 2 in here. What do you get? You get 4 plus 4, 8. And then y of 2. You do the exact same thing. This is 12 minus 8, 4. So it means that the tangent line will be horizontal at the point 8, 4. Okay. So uh, let's actually keep that in mind. So horizontal tall at uh, 0, 0 and... 8, 4. Okay, let's keep that in mind. Now we're going to find where the tangent line to the curve is vertical. So I'm going to erase all of this. And 
and vertical, what does it mean? It means that x prime of t is equal to 0, but y prime of t is not equal to 0. So same thing, if they're both equal to 0, uh, you would need to resort to another technique, likely the limit definition of the derivative, to find, uh, to find like dx over dy at this place. So, uh, okay, from there. So same thing, right? You set x prime equal to zero. So you have like number one, uh, x prime is equal to zero. You have zero is equal to 2t plus two. So uh, you can factor like two times t plus one. This happens when t is equal to negative one. That's step number one. Step number two, you verify y prime of negative 1. You want to make sure that it's not equal to 0. So here you go. y prime of negative 1. This is equal to negative 6 minus 3, so negative 9, which means that you're good. Okay, you know that when t is equal to negative 1, the tangent line will be vertical. And step number 3, what you want to do is to find x of negative 1 and y of negative 1. Okay, so you replace negative 1 inside of here. You have uh, 1, actually let's, let's write it just to make sure, plus 2 times negative 1. So you're getting 1 minus 2, so negative 1. And then y of negative 1 will be 3 times negative 1 squared minus negative 1 to the power of 3. So that will give you 3 plus 1, 4. So it means that the tangent line will be vertical at negative 1, 4. So okay, again, let's take note of it here. So it's vertical <coughs> at negative 1, 4. Now, the last thing I want to do, so let's erase all of this now. Is I want to find uh, the intervals of upward and downward concavity. Remember that to do this, uh, we're going to make a sine chart for, so sine chart for uh, d squared y over dx squared. So what does it mean? It means that we need to kind of factor this. That being said, uh, this is not really factorable. Factorable. We need to actually complete a square. So, um, okay, let's complete the square of the top. So complete uh, square of t squared plus 2t minus 2. So to do that, uh, we know that t squared plus 2t uh, minus 2 is going to be the same as t squared plus 2t plus 1 minus 3, which is the same as t plus 1 squared minus 3. Okay. And from there, if we want, we can use the difference of squares formula. So we could go, uh, we have uh, t plus 1 minus square root of 3 multiplied by uh, t plus 1 plus square root of 3. Okay, so what does it mean? Uh, it means that, uh, let's now erase, um, so we don't need this anymore, let's erase it. We just need the second derivative. So it means that uh, d squared y over dx squared is equal to negative 3 t plus 1 minus root 3 and then t plus 1 plus root 3 
over uh, t plus 1 four times t plus 1 to the power of 3. Okay, now you have your way of making a sign chart uh, that come from uh, calculus 1. So remember what you have to do is to put uh, the values where the derivative is either zero or does not exist. You have them well displayed here in terms of t. So uh, let's actually uh, punch, punch them in. Okay. So what's happening? Uh, the lowest value is going to be negative one minus uh, root three. So this is like really the first value, negative one minus root three. Then at negative one, the derivative does not exist. And finally, uh, at we have negative one plus root three, that the derivative is also gonna change sign. Okay, let's write the factors one after the other. Let's start with the easiest, the negative three over four t plus one to the power of three. We will consider this as a single factor. Okay, and we see that when t is below negative one, this will be positive, positive, positive. And if t is above negative one, it will be negative. After that, we have two more factors. Let's do them in black. So this factor right here, so the t plus one minus root three, okay? So it's zero is over here, as you can see, and it will be positive after and negative before. Finally, if we look at this factor, which is going a little bit overboard, unfortunately. Ugh. Okay, I'm gonna push the signs. So I'm gonna have like a negative here and a positive here, okay? So it, the, it zero is here and it's negative before and positive after. We're almost there. So let's have a look. So this is d, uh, d squared y. Yeah, d squared y over dx squared. And we just analyze the sign. Now, fortunately, I can erase this because I have the derivative right here. So I'm just going to put also like, a, I'm going to move the lines down like this. And we have that the, the second derivative is positive here, negative here, positive here, and negative here. And this means that uh, so the curve, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but let's put the, let's put a curve here. It's going to be a concave up in X in this region, a concave down in X in this region, then it's going to be back concave up and then concave down. Okay. We could label these things as point of inflection if we wanted to, but this is the only thing we need in order to uh, sketch the curve. So I hope this was helpful. See you in the next video or in class.